Now you might be asking, hey Patrick, running Forge, Script, all that other crap, there's so much text. There's so much stuff to do there. I don't want to write all that stuff. And to that I say, you're thinking correctly. We want to work incredibly hard to be incredibly lazy. So I love the way you're thinking. And I know we're diverging from this a little bit, but we learned how to do integration tests. This is what we have left, but we're going to make a pit stop. I lied. Pit stop. How can we make running these scripts a lot easier? And this is where we're going to use something called a make file. So if you right click and you create a new file called a make file, this is where we're going to add some shortcuts for ourselves so we don't have to write those long scripts every single time. A make file is a simple text file used by the utility called make to automate the process of building and compiling programs for projects. It's pretty, it's really popular in the Foundry world. You should have, if you create this make file in your folder and you type make, you should get something like no targets stop. If you don't get this, it means you don't have make installed and you'll need to install make. If you have a hard time installing make, be sure to leave a discussion on the GitHub repo associated with this course. Additionally, make files are great because they allow us to automatically grab what's ever in our .env without us having to do source.env every single time. So what we can do in our make file, we can do something like dash include .env, and now we can create shortcuts for commands, including whatever's in our .env file. So for example, if we wanted to make a shortcut for build, which wouldn't be much of a shortcut, we would type build, colon, semicolon, and then just do forge, build. Now what we could do in our terminal is type in make build, and you'll see it'll run forge build. So this was a short example, but what about a much bigger example, right? What if we wanted to do something like deploy Zapolia? What would that look? This little semicolon is if you want to do the command on the same line. If you don't want to do this command on the same line, you just hit enter and then tab and write your command down here. So for deploying this to Sepolia, we've done this a couple of times here, but it would be forge script script slash deploy fund me dot s dot soul deploy fund me dash RPC dash URL is going to be Sepolia RPC URL space dash private key is going to be private key to actually deploy it, we would do dash broadcast. And then finally, we probably would also want to automatically verify it, which we're going to teach you how to do right now, we would do dash dash verify dash dash ether scan dash API dash key and ether scan API key dash one, two, three, four, and then just some visibilities like that. Whew. Now, if I toggle my word wrap, this is obviously a very big command. And this would suck to have to write out every single time. For us to verify every single time up oh, and actually, excuse me, in make file, you need to circle your environment variables with the dollar sign and these parentheses. In order for Foundry to automatically verify stuff for us, we need to get, we need to go to Etherscan and we need to sign up for our own API key. So we're gonna go ahead and sign up, Foundry course. We'll get our email, we'll go ahead and log in. I'm not a robot. And cool, once we're logged in, we can go up to our profile, down to API keys, and we can add to create a new API key. Or maybe Foundry full course. And now we can use this API key, copy it, bring it over here, drop it into our .env as our etherscan API key, like this. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna add in my private key. But remember, this is for your W account only. I would never ever add my actual private key associated with real money in a .env file, that is ridiculous. Cool. Let's copy the private key, go back in here, we'll do private key equals this, okay, and cool. And now we have this super giant script, but we can run this whole thing in one command by just saying make deploy Sepolia. Now you don't have to run this command with me because again, we are deploying to a real network here and this does cost money but feel free to watch and follow along here. So now you can see what the actual script is doing down here. And we can see it's actually running our script without us having to do this giant command here. And just to note, I am doing toggle word wrap. All this is on one line, but if you do jump into the command palette, which again, this is command palette, this is file viewer, command palette, file viewer, command palette, and you do toggle word wrap, it'll 
automatically wrap the words around. But we can see we're actually sending this contract. We can see we actually are starting to verify the contract as well right from our command line just because we have an etherscan API key. In fact, now if I go to polia.io, paste this contract address in here, we can see, oh my goodness, it's already been verified for us. We didn't even have to go to etherscan ourselves and verify. It did it for us, fantastic. So we deployed it and verified it all programmatically directly from our command line. Great job. So we've done this and we've done this. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into make files. However, I'm gonna give you a framework that I like to use to make setting up make files a lot easier. If you go to Foundry Fund Me F23, the GitHub repo associated with this course, and you scroll down to the make file, we've got actually this whole setup to make it a lot easier that you can go ahead and use. Using that make file, if we scroll down to usage in here, Oh, and by the way, you can of course always do cast send to interact instead of scripts, but whatever you wanna do, you can use this as a much easier way to get set up. So for now, I'm actually just gonna copy paste this whole thing, paste it into my make file here. Oh, I copied too much, way too much. Wow, okay, whoopsies. And let's just walk through this. So this dot .phony just tells make that all of these are not folders. And just anytime I have any command here, I pretty much just always put it in dot phony. Default anvil key. This is the just the default private key for anvil. We add this little help section so that if you just run make help, it'll tell you exactly how you can do stuff, which is really helpful. So if we want to deploy something, we do make deploy args equals dash dash network sapolia, which is really nice, or make deploy args equals or make fund args equals network Sapolia. We can do forge clean, remove Git modules. We can reinstall all the packages, update packages, compile, test, snapshot, format our code, run an Anvil node. And then this is the most interesting stuff down here because if I wanted to, if I did this, I could do clear, I could do make Anvil, which will spin up an Anvil node. I could spin up a new terminal and then run, well, let's run make help real quick. So I'll do make deploy args equals dash dash network anvil. Actually, we don't need to do any args for anvil because it defaults to anvil. If I just do make deploy, we'll automatically deploy to our anvil chain here. And we do indeed do that. If we wanted to deploy to Sepolia, we would do make deploy args equals dash dash network Sepolia, like that. Like I said, I'm not gonna go too deep into make files. If you want to learn more about make files, you can definitely chat GPT them, AI them, or Google them. But they're incredibly helpful for making it so that we don't have to write these super long commands anytime we want to do something basic.